Okay. It's your favorite prophet, Prophet 6, here again. And I have some new developments as it relates to my Christian walk and as being a prophet to the angel of the church of Laodicea. Now, one of the things that I want to bring out today, I, I just came from uh, the sanctuary, the Adventist church, uh, the, 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 the center of worship for the Emmanuel Seventh-day Adventist church, which is in uh, Chicago Heights, I believe it is, uh, Illinois. And uh, or it's somewhere around Chicago Heights, Madison. Anyway, the pastor's name is J. D. Parker. Okay, 77 years old. He is a uh, pastor and and uh, uh, an official of the Seventh Day Adventist Church. He's he's you know uh, pretty influential. But um, <clears throat> the reason why I'm bringing this up today is because I was just asked not to come back to that church on the grounds that I believe I believe I'm a prophet okay now I never told them that I was a prophet <clears throat> but uh, whenever they ask people what their gifts were I always tell them prophecy and so that wasn't a problem the other reason why I was kicked out of the church and, and, and another thing the only type of the, and the, and the re reason why me being a prophet or believing that I'm a prophet was problematic for them because they believe that the only and the last prophet in the Adventist church is this dead lady named Ellen G. White. So the only type of prophets they believe in, like ancient Israel of old or the Jews, are dead prophets. So when they hear a person or think or get a whiff that a person that is alive that says they are prophet, it, it don't go over well because their attitude is basically the best prophets are dead prophets. So there's no room for a living prophet. But one of the things that was interesting in this conversation, you know, he took me aside. You know, they always like to quietly, you know, uh, boot you out of the church or at night time boot you out of the church just like what they did when they crucified Jesus you know all he, uh, you know most of the trials that Jesus went through a lot of them was at night you know so especially the ones that were initiated by the leadership of the church not necessarily Rome not Rome at all but the ones the trials that were initiated by uh, the, the seven day Adventist in Jesus day you know the contemporary parallels what would would have been the pastors so they always want to work at night and behind closed doors there's never any witnesses is you know is everything is always mooted in um, um, he say she say and they like it that way because it's a sign of confusion obviously but anyway, he told me the reason why that he was asking me not to come back to this church is because at first, first of all, I believe I'm a prophet. And so I, I, I res responded to him and said, well, I'm not your prophet. I'm not your prophet. You say your prophet is a dead lady. I have no, pro that's, that's okay. All right. I get it. I'm not your prophet. So it's really none of your business. But he said, yeah, but you also baptize people. You know, you always, you, you're baptizing people, you're teaching people, you're visiting people, you know, you're discipling them, you're teaching them, and you're baptizing them. And you have no authority to do that. Now, coincidentally enough, uh, let, let me give you the date. The date that we're in right now is May the 5th. 2012 okay now the seven day Adventist church is studying a quarterly and it's based the, the first five weeks of it so far have been about witnessing and evangelism witnessing and evangelism and so uh, la the last time I was at uh, their Sabbath school class they, the scripture came up in Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 and 19 where it says 
Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And one of the other uh, lessons that they studied was called every person, every member ministry. And so I, I asked the question in the Sabbath school co class that that probably preempted this a uh, request that I not come back. I asked the question. So which of these to the Sabbath school teacher? I said, which of these are we not supposed to do? He said, we're supposed to do all of them. So I said, so you're saying that we're supposed to teach, baptize, and disciple? So anybody in here could teach, baptize, and disciple? He said, yeah, but there's one caveat. The only way that you should teach, baptize, and disciple is if you do it under the leadership and with the authorization of the leadership of the church. And I, and, I, and I brought out to him, I said, well, you know that that's not in the lesson anywhere? As a matter of fact, that's not even in the Bible? And he said, well, God has set up an organization. And, you know, they go into that, that spiel about, you know, the organization, just like the Jehovah Witnesses do, just like the Catholics do. And if, you, if you're not baptizing into, into, he basically told me this, the Sabbath school teacher. If you're not baptizing people in the name of of the set baptizing people in Jesus name with the power and authority of the Adventist church is not of God he really did tell me that now I know this can be gainsaid and it's just and right now you're just listening to me but this is what they're teaching don't that sound just like the Catholic doctrine don't that sound just like the Mormons don't that sound uh, strangely familiar to the the watchtower organization so look at this. So so I asked them this question. I said, so all those other people that are out there in the Baptist church and the Lutheran church and the Catholic church that are being baptized, however they do it, I say it's not of God. He said, no, they are part of the body of Christ. I said, so how do you how do you reconcile these two things? They are not baptizing them in the with the authority. Of the seven day Adventist church but yet they still in the body of Christ and so he was in a caught in a hard place because I had a whole chain of other questions that I was going to ask him that should that that revealed the duplicity and contradiction of what he've already said so anyway getting back to uh, Pastor Parker so we we're, we're talking and everything and so he told me uh, well we have a prophet I said, I'm not trying to be y'all prophet. I'm trying to be a prophet of God. I'm trying to live up to that calling. That's what I'm doing. I'm not trying to be the prophet of those people out there. I said, I'm obviously not their prophet. And so he said, at the beginning of the conversation, he said, I was proselytizing. I said, I'm not proselytizing these people here. But he was mentioning you're proselytizing people outside of the church on your free time that God has given you with your free will. You're baptizing people, brother. You can't be going around baptizing people in the name of Jesus and you're not in the Adventist church. This is what he was telling me. This is what he's telling me. I'm hearing this in my ear. I'm like, whoa. See, and I know that the members of the church don't believe that. But see, when they get you off privately and they don't do what the Bible says, it says when you have an ought with your brother, you take somebody with you. But he told me, you're not a brother. I said, so I asked him this. I said, are the people in the uh, Catholic church and in the Baptist church, are they part of the body of Christ? And he said, yeah. But now watch this now. He said, I'm not. Because I said, I'm a prophet. Now, mind you now. In some of these other churches, Pentecostal, Apostolic, guess what they have? Apostles, prophets. They claim to have apostles, prophets, teachers, and evangelists. But he's saying, I'm not even in the body of Christ. But it, guess what he, But you know what he asked me then? He said, you need to join the church. I said, I'm already in the church. He said, no, you need to join the Seventh-day Adventist church. I said, but don't y'all always say the church is the people? He said, the Adventist church is a people. I say, but you're asking me to join an organization. You're not asking me to join 
a people. So it's a lot of contradiction. See, all this stuff is just is just is just vacuous rhetoric. It really is. The church is not the builder. These people don't believe none of the stuff that they say. You know why? They are tares. So as I'm sitting in the in this uh mother's room, nursery room or whatever you want to call it, and I'm talking to this pastor who is, you know, a tear. No doubt about it. He's a tear. You know, he I said, so I, I, I said, boil down to what's the big problem. You're baptizing people in Jesus' name, and you believe that you are a prophet. We can't have you come here. Because the members are coming to me, and they have a problem with that based on Adventist doctrine. And so he, always, he also asked me this. You know, not one time did he ask me that I believe in Jesus. Not one single time. Not one single time. And as many times as I tried to get him back to Jesus, as as many times as he brought up the organization. And I said, I said, you don't believe anything. You believe that everything that you believe is true. He said, absolutely. I said, well, I don't believe that everything that I believe is true. Now, the pillars of my faith, I believe that they are firm and established. But I believe that God is going to reveal some things to me that I thought was right and they was wrong. And so I'm waiting for God. And I told him this. I said, I'm not the only prophet in the Seventh-day Adventist church. There are other prophets in the Seventh-day Adventist church that don't even know that they're prophets. And there's some out there that do know that they are prophets. And guess what? They are scared out of their minds. So he was going to try to subject me to this Seven Day Adventist version of uh, a test of a prophet. And let me tell you what what the Seven Day Adventist version of a of testing a prophet to see if he's a prophet. It's not by the word in the testimony. If they speech not according, no, it's not that scripture. They love to they love to make that seem like that's their scripture. But the stuff that they start asking you about is stuff. Can you hold a book that weighed 15 pounds for an hour like Ellen G. White did? C can you stop breathing for, 40, for an hour? See, these are Seventh-day Adventist um, roles, uh, proofs if you're a real prophet. And guess who the standard of being a real prophet is? It's not Jesus. It's not John. The, it's nobody in the Bible. It's one person. Ellen G. White. And then for those that try to get even more even more clever, they do use the Bible. People like Stephen Lewis. He, he'll say, if you don't stop breathing, you're not a real prophet. If you don't see visions, you're not a real prophet. He now, even though he's very familiar with the scripture in Hebrews chapter 1, where it says, in, in time past and in many diverse ways, God spoke to the prophets in diverse manners. He's familiar with that scripture. But they said in concrete that God has to speak this way. You've got to be able to not breathe for an hour while you're getting a vision. If you're breathing while you're getting a vision, not a true prophet. No matter what comes out your mouth, no matter how true it is, you're a false prophet. Do you see the superstitions in the Adventist church? They are equal in ton amount to those that are advocated in the Catholic church, the Mormon church, and the Seventh Day, I mean, and, and the uh, uh, Watchtower. It's superstition. It's the Adventist form of superstitions. It's reminiscent, it, re it reeks smacks of the Dark Ages, really.